biggest joy is so often they say, oh, I can't do it and throw their ha hands up and say it's all going wrong and how can you do that and I can't and you know. And then sometimes at the end of a lesson, I tell them to put the painting up against the wall and get back from it. Hmm, it's not so bad after all. But the biggest thing is if they leave the painting here and go home and we later come back and have a look at it and they're really surprised. And I think my biggest joy is seeing a student being happy with what he's done. Um, because I was born in Wellington in 1936, these first little watercolours are of my hometown. They were painted in 1999, uh, a visit to Wellington to my mother, um, who I used to go and visit every year. But this was a special visit because at the end of that year she passed away. So these paintings are of from Wadestown, which got a beautiful harbour view and the view that she could get from her house, which she really loved. The two paintings with the water in them one is of a rotunda at a place called Oriental Bay, where as a child, my mother used to pack up a tea every Friday night and we used to go down to my father's office, pick him up and go and have a swim around about half past five at Oriental Bay and a picnic tea. Uh, the last little painting of Wellington with the boat sheds is on the other side of the harbour from where we lived and a monastery dominates the top of the hill and gets a beautiful view of the harbour. The last two little paintings of New, Ze of New Zealand I did about three or four years ago when I went with Ev Hales to the South Island and did a painting trip. And the first one is a painting of Glen Orkey where the boats zip round these tree trunks and are doing a lot of damage to the vegetation and to the roots of the tree and the next one is a rather quaint little scene in Arrowtown and these little houses are miners cottages because Arrowtown was a very uh, popular mining town in those days and you can see that the people couldn't have been very tall because the cottages are very small. My mother was very interested in design, she studied it as a young girl before she got married. Um, fashion design is not something that's ever interested me, but I just love observing things and putting down the information. And um, when I was a child in New Zealand, uh, there was nothing really to do in the weekends, so I used to go to a friend's place, and weekends were nearly always wet in the winter time, and so we used to bring out the pencils and paper and we used to draw. Now I want to go on to Australia. I used to paint in oils originally and when the children had left home I did a part-time course at Caulfield Tech in, for oil painting and in one of the classes we had to do a painting that was in the style of a famous Australian painter and I chose Russell Drysdale. And the painting I did was of an Aborigine with one side was very dark, which was meant to signify his custody in, in jail, and the other side was bright and the background of the red country side outside. Now, deaths and custody in the 1980s were talked about a lot. And it's very sad, I feel, that a quarter of a century later, the situation is worse. Now I'll start some paintings that I did in Melbourne. The first one is a church which stood on the corner of William Street and Turak Road and I was still painting in oils at this time. And there was a lot of controversy. The council wanted to pull it down and put up high rise and I passed this church one day and it had been half pulled down and I thought... I must, at that stage, we didn't know whether it was going to be reconstructed or whether it was going to be pulled down. Unfortunately, it was pulled down, and I think there was about, I don't know how many st stories, but a very large building there now. The next two paintings also talk about demolition. These little houses were 
in a car which is now a car park in Camberwell. Everybody had to leave. I think the council gave them some compensation, but this little old lady who was 90 that lived in this little house refused to budge. And she lived there for two years before she passed away and the council could have her property. And it is now the car park in front of Woolworths and Target in Camberwell. Um, I painted in oils for a number of years until about 30 years ago when I damaged my back and I thought, now carrying these heavy oils and canvases around isn't really very helpful. I'll, I'll start to learn watercolour painting. And I just love it. It's, it's a wonderful medium. It's transparent. It's free. It's got many possibilities. And I've just done that ever since. I used to do a lot of painting on a Saturday, uh, Saturday with friends. And this particular one is in Carlton. Um, the three little houses, they're all a little bit different and they're all very old. But the tall one was interesting because on the day we were painting, it was up for sale. We, I had a look inside and on the board, I found out that it belonged to Peter Hillary, Sir Edmund Hillary's son. And the house was called the Inner City Base Camp, which refers to Hillary's climbing of Mount Everest. The next one is in East Melbourne, uh, very close to St Pat's Cathedral. The next one, which is a rather charming little piece of architecture, is Middle Park. And the next one is in Port Melbourne. And no, it's not a demolition, it's a renovation. Now I've done a painting of Collingwood Railway Station, which used to be a very, very busy railway station because it was the centre of the leather goods industry because of the part of the Yarra that goes past there and leather goods need water. However, now it is very desolate, but it is the railway station that's closest to what was Herbert's factory in Hoddle Street. Now we move on to some a series of one, two, three, four uh, collage paintings. Where, when I painted on Saturdays, uh, we went to Carlton and Fitzroy and Footscray and these lovely old areas, and I always felt I wanted to give the feeling of the whole area, and so I did these collages. Uh, the first one is South Melbourne. Uh, the next one is Carlton. And the third one is actually the city of Melbourne showing the cathedral and the Federation Square. And the last one is the area of Melling Road and the railway station in that area. Still in Melbourne, we are looking at the Studley Park boat shed in Kew. Another one of the another one of the Kew boat shed. And the third one is the Fairfield boat shed. Now these boat sheds are evidently part of many, many boat sheds that were along the Yarra, and I think they went up as far as Hillsville. And this was the main means of transport, bringing good and timber and different things down the Yarra to, to central Melbourne. But only the Kew and Fairfield ones are left for us to enjoy. The next one is in the garden of the Heidi Gallery in Berlin and it was lovely to see children playing around the sculptures of the that Inga King had done and I think she passed away two years ago but she has done a lot of lovely sculpture, sculptures in this area and in, near the art centre too. Another Saturday painting took me to the shrine and when we got to the shrine, we found that it was Greek National Day. So I've been able to put all these lovely youngsters in the painting in their national costume. Moving on to Altona, the day I painted there, there was a lady there, a Chinese lady with a hat on and yellow gloves, and she was collecting mussels. I don't think she could probably read English because behind her was a big notice to say, please don't collect mussels. 
The next painting is one I did at William, Williamstown. And then we have a look at a painting I did called The Bluff in Sandringham. And that is part of the artist's walk. And there is a board up there to say that Van Gerard had painted it there some in the last century. Watercolour is a medium that uses water. And because of that, you can wet your surface and you can throw your paint on that surface and it runs and it does all sorts of wonderful things which artists call happy accidents. Of course, one has a lot of unhappy accidents too. But um, sometimes it's quite exciting. And when I'm teaching and I see these little runs and I say, what do you think of that? And they say, oh, that's beautiful. So I say, well, leave it. Don't touch it. Just let it be. And I think this is the exciting exciting part about the uh, watercolour medium. This little painting is of a fellow in a little boat and he's rowing through the Lotus Farm up near Yarra Junction. At the, in this farm there are six lakes where you can walk around them and he's collecting the pods from the lotus plants which they sell overseas and it's quite a, quite a big business. Then we move to the botanical gardens where one Saturday night, one Saturday afternoon in June, we experience this rather lovely sight of the swans crossing the lake. And to begin with, there were two swans and they swam towards us. And as you can see in the picture, they are turning round. And when they got to the other side of the lake, they had made a perfect heart shape with their, two, with their long necks. So I've called this picture Swan Lake. And still in the botanical gardens, we're now in the children's garden where there are lots of little sprigs of water. And the part that interested me was these large boab trees, which in a painting I did of the Northern Territory, I have painted a boab tree, but I didn't think that they would have grown or could have existed in Victoria. However, these may have been big trees already matured that they put into this little garden, but it makes a, an interesting sight. One day we went up the Eureka Tower and I love this view looking down on Flinders Street Station. Um, I did do a sketch up there while I was there, but of course that painting was done in the studio. And still in Melbourne, this is a painting in Chinatown in Cohen Place, and at the end of Cohen Place is a very interesting Chinese museum. And um, I think it gives the, the feeling of, of Chinatown. The last painting in the Melbourne region is when I stayed for a few days with the Big Artist Society in Lawn. And we went up the road to Apollo Bay, and I did this painting from Teddy's Lookout in Lawn.